Hello and welcome to this Pro Tip Seminar. This is part one of Book Titles, a mixture of art and science, where we teach you how to apply free tools from the web to your process of choosing a book title. My name is Evo Terra, and along with Jeff Moyarty, we formed ePublish Unum and are helping authors survive and thrive in a digital world. I'll start this short video seminar with this obvious statement. Names are important. They're important to you for many reasons. They help you make a sense of connection with the world around you. Calling the objects in your life all that thing over there isn't really very helpful, as you're quickly going to forget which thing is which. They help us establish ownership. We get to name our kids, our pets, our cars. The right to name something is an important way to say, this is mine. Names also help with symbolism. Symbolism is important for getting names shared with others. We collectively agree to names things like rivers, mountains, and even cities. While there may be committees and guidelines that officially name those sorts of things, well, they only work once a goodly number of people start using the name. Now, most important to this video is the fact that names help to locate specific things. Let me give you an example. You know that one book where the main character goes to that school where he learns all this really cool stuff, makes a whole bunch of friends, even though there are others in the school who kind of hate him because he's got so much talent and he still goes on to sort of save everyone? Now some of you may be thinking I'm referring to Harry Potter, but others might be thinking I'm talking about Ender's Game or countless other books that follow that same storyline. We mitigate the confusion between the two titles, or more than that, when we call them by their name rather than describing what's inside the pages. So clearly, naming your book is important. It's not something you should do on a whim, though I do agree that it needs to sound good, hence the subtitle of this class, A Mixture of Art and Science. I'll leave the art all to you while I focus on the science, or at least the numbers. So let's stick with that scenario of finding the right book. You want to be found. You want your book to be found by potential readers, right? Well, other than the hugely important word of mouth, the way most people find things today is with a search engine. If your book can't be found in a search engine, well, then for all intents and purposes, it doesn't actually exist. So let's dig into a tool that helps you figure out what people are already searching for. Because if you understand that, you'll start to get a sense of what you should call your book so that it stands a chance of being discovered by those doing the searching. The tool I like to use for this is the Google Keyword Tool. The easiest way to find that, search for it. Google Keyword Tool. It's always the first results inside of Google. Click that link and log in if you already have a Google account. You'll get a lot more results when you're logged in. If you need to, go ahead and pause the video right here and then start it up once you're logged in. Okay, now that you're logged in, let me show you how this tool works by using one of my own previous book titles. You'll have plenty of time to play with titles of your own, but I need to show you the important bits and, and why I think this tool built for advertisers is also a great tool for authors. In the box near the top with the word, uh, well, the phrase, word or phrase next to it, enter in this text, Expert Podcasting Practices for Dummies. Yes, that was the name of one of my books, and I wasn't thrilled with it at the time, but then again, I didn't have a lot of choice in the name of mine. You, however, likely do. So go ahead and run that search and make sure that you're looking at keyword ideas in that results set below. Now, in that data set, I want you to focus just on the local monthly searches column. In fact, if you click the word columns in the upper right hand corner, you can get rid of everything else. Well, except maybe local search trends. That's probably going to come in handy for you later, so, so leave, it, leave it there. So that column, local monthly searches, it shows you, or, or will show you, the approximate search volume for the entered text. In this case, at least of this recording, only dashes show. That means that on average, no one is searching on that phrase in any given month. Yeah, not too terribly surprising to me. Now, 
That could be simply because the book was published years ago. But, but really, that's not important to this tool. No, the reason that string of text doesn't show results is simply because it's too long. Not necessarily too long to be a good title, but too long for Google to tell us much about search behavior. So let's make some changes, as clearly no one is using that full string of text. Let's try just using expert podcasting practices. Nothing. No better. Still shows dashes, which means there aren't enough searches happening on that string of text in any month to register with this tool. Let's narrow it down a little bit further using only podcasting practices. Still no results. What about expert podcasting? Type that in. Nothing. No wonder this book didn't sell all that well. Hmm. Okay, so now we have to really ask a question. What is this book about? Well, it was a book that teaches people how to podcast. Ooh, let's try that. How to podcast. Hit enter. And bingo, now we have data. Lots of data, but I need to teach you how to better interpret those results before you assume that bigger is better. It is, but sort of. Okay, on the left side of the screen, look for the words match type. Underneath that, you'll see check boxes for broad, exact, and phrase. Let me define each of those for you. Phrase shows the number of searches happening monthly when that string of text was used consecutively and in that order, but in conjunction with other text. So searches for the string, I want to learn how to podcast, are counted in those local monthly searches. But how to make a podcast or how do I podcast would not be counted because they don't contain that precise phrase. This is very helpful when you have options for the order of words you'd like to use in your title. Now, exact is also important. Search volume here is counted when that exact string of text is used. Nothing more, nothing less. As you might imagine, exact matches usually have the lowest number of local monthly searches because people search with many different words in many different orders. And broad, well, that catches everything that's else. The words in the string of text mixed up with lots of other words in really any random order. So searches on irrelevant things like podcasts to learn how to speak English would be included in those totals, but definitely not the target I'm looking for. I highly recommend sticking with phrase and exact when evaluating the monthly search volume for the text you are considering. So, why is this important? How does this information really help you choose the name for your book? Well, it goes back to being found, and it's all about discovering the intent of what people are looking for. In this case, we're using the behavior of people who use search engines, effectively everyone, as a proxy for intent and desire. Google discovers books for people, people who didn't even know they wanted to buy a book every single day. You should really want to be a part of that. Now, some of you are saying, okay, I, I get all that, but does the precise order of the text I use matter all that much? I mean, isn't it enough that I'm writing about something that people are searching for? Uh, no, not really. Because even though Google is getting better at this, they still like search terms to match as, as closely as possible the string of text used in the search. Now, they do have a semantic engine, but does it really know that how to podcast searchers are really looking for something that's called expert podcasting practices for dummies? My sales indicate no. Probably because there are a lot of other how-to books on podcasting, and some of them had much better titles that better matched a searcher's intent. So now that we've got that figured out and you get the mechanics, let's use a book that I didn't write but did sell very well. Remove what you have right now in the search box and enter the social media Bible. Okay, hit enter, and as you will see, instant results. Oh, but one more thing about those local monthly searches. Don't take them too terribly literally as numbers. It's really just a peek underneath Google's hood, and even if you see a double-digit number, great, that can mean a healthy interest in that keyword phrase.
Okay, so as you look at the keyword ideas that Google suggests might be related to your search, I want you to look down for social media for business. See that down there? That might have been better because really that's what this book is about. However, you cannot ignore the emotional appeal of having the word Bible in the title. I mean, even a phrase like social media business has a higher search volume, though that phrase doesn't really roll off the tongue and wouldn't look natural as a book title. And here's where you get to apply the art to the science offered by these results. Now, note this is not just for non-fiction authors. Fiction authors can get great value out of this tool as well. Here's how. You can use this tool to make sure you're avoiding confusion, not just with your title, because reality is lots of books have the same exact name out there, but you can check the name of your characters. For example, one book I'm aware of that's not really selling very well has a very important and more importantly very serious character whose name is Al Foxworthy. Hmm. Drop that last name into Google's keyword tool. Yeah, probably not a very good combination. Now, no, I don't think that's going to stop someone from buying the book, but it certainly could be off-putting for the reader who chuckles each time they read that character's name. So unless the symbolic nature of the name is very important, I see no reason why it shouldn't be changed to something that doesn't already have baggage. Now it's also good to uncover unwanted associations. Let's say you want to call your young adult far future sci-fi but football book The Rookie. And since it's about a first year player, that name makes sense. Using the Google Keyword Tool, we see a strong amount of searching on that phrase. But are those the right searches? Go ahead and click through by clicking on the result itself to see the actual search page that results from Google. Pay attention and remember, these results aren't just what Google thinks is important. This is what Google knows people are looking for when they type in this search term. At the time of this recording, a popular Canadian cop show is dominating the results. No, that's not enough to take the title off of the shelf. This is just information you can use to help make an informed decision. Okay, that's enough for today. Next time, I'll show you Google Trends and a nifty tool called Uber Suggest to round out your training. And don't forget, we have ongoing classes that help you deal with the ever-changing aspects of digital publishing. You'll find those front and center at epublishunum.com. While you're there, sign up for our newsletter and get notified when we have new classes and educational materials available. It's a changing landscape out there and we really do want to help you survive and thrive in a digital world. For Jeff Moriarty, I'm Evo Terra. Thanks for watching this Pro Tip Seminar. See you next time.